Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward, joined by my good friend Robert B.B. Landers, former Ohio State defensive tackle who knows a thing or two about stuff in the run and trying to get ready for Clemson. Two things that uh, Ohio State did last week against Northwestern and is doing right now ahead of the Sugar Bowl. B.B., I know that you still are not over last year, um, but you'll probably have seen some things against Northwestern that are encouraging that maybe some revenge can come next week. Yeah, I feel like as a whole, the defense did a great job of stopping around, you know what I mean? And that's the biggest thing is one thing that Coach Suki used to preach to us all the time is if a team has over 200 yards in the air, we can still kick their ass. But if a team has over 200 yards on the field, we got a problem. Or on the ground, we have a problem. So I feel like um, going into this week, if the front seven can sustain that level of play, especially with, you know, a quarterback like Trevor Lawrence, who I learned the hard way last year, could actually beat you with his feet, which came out of nowhere. And then you got a running back like ETN, who is the next level running back that will be successful in the NFL, um, you know, create a new line of scrimmage and uh, having a consistent um, pressure up front will make a big, will play a big factor in this game. So, so much when we have these conversations and, and the people that talk about, you know, the Ohio State defensive line, the pressure, the attention is always on the pressure in the passing game and the sacks. I thought what was really impressive about Ohio State when they won that fourth consecutive Big Ten title on Saturday against Northwestern was there was no room to operate against the rush. And that was about as dominant of a performance, I thought, as you could have possibly had from those front four. And that's the thing. Northwestern has always been like that. They typically try to collapse, um, make – let me say this. They typically try to make the gaps smaller so it's a lot harder to be efficient um, with rushing the passer. And they do things where, you know, they utilize the running back very well to chip the D in. They utilize tight ends well to double down on max protection on the other D in. So they do a good job within their scheme and how they do things. Um, but with them focusing so much on not – allowing certain rush lanes for the D-line, it makes the quarterback have to throw in a smaller window. Now you have to stay in that you're creating a natural tighter pocket. So as a D-line, we think, okay, push the pocket, make the window about that small, it's hard to make, make an efficient pass. All right, so uh, how much of that will carry over? Because we know that the talent disparity between Northwestern and Clemson probably couldn't be any wider. You've been through this. You know, what will the preparation be like to get ready for Lawrence and ETN now this next week or so the biggest thing for this week is this we're at a point now where athlete for athlete we're damn near matched up all the way across the board so it's going to come down to one thing coach Mick always preached to us you always revert back to your training so how they practice and prep for this week and how they train for this week will determine which team is going to win most prepared team will win the game we can hear Mickey Hi. talking about that uh, all year round uh, Rushman, we're ready on Saturday against Northwestern. B.B. Lander is going to break that film down for us right now and show us why they're having so, so much success. Let's roll the tape. All right, B.B., something that's going to come up here is just how dominant 92 and 72 were throughout this game. I know that you've talked about them going into the offseason. I can't believe neither one made first team all Big Ten. You can make your own case for that as we go along, but they were just absolutely rolling on Saturday. Oh, they definitely were, man. Number one, I could argue all day why they should have been first team all Big Ten. And in my personal opinion, the defensive linemen, especially for the Big Ten of the year, because I have yet to see a D lineman playing at the level that they're playing at on a consistent basis. No, they haven't played as many games as maybe some other teams have, but regardless, their level of play has been excellent and getting better every week. So with this play right here, you know, it's a simple, what it looks like a simple little stretch zone or outside zone. And the key with the outside zone is that I've always found is you have to get off of the ball and you have to get engaged with your offensive lineman, but still create a new line of scrimmage. Now, you see right here, Haskell's the first one off the ball, and he gets hands on the offensive guard. Now, watch where he, he sets the new line of scrimmage two yards in the backfield to then get off of the ball. Or it's a simple arm over escape to make the play for a tackle for loss. Then what also helps that, too, is we do a good job as a defense all the way across the board at setting the edge, building a wall up front to make the running back have to stretch that ball a little bit more to give Haskell a little bit more time to get off of the block and get downhill. 
But it initially started with Haskell's pressure and creating a new line of scrimmage to make the running back now have to stretch his path a little bit wider. You see that so frequently with Larry Johnson defensive lines, that first first step, that quick reaction, that, that always sets the tone. Sometimes teams will try to use it against Ohio State, which Northwestern try to do here with a screen. Yes. So the thing with the screen is, and Antoine did a great job of playing this, Coach Johnson always said, if it's too good to be true, more than likely it is. <laughs> so as you can see, he was one of the – they all reacted well to it. You always have to have at least one person still pressure on the quarterback, which to Rob Vincent does a good job of. And then the other two guys do a good job of recognizing the late, but Antoine did a phenomenal job of realizing, okay, this is a little too easy. Sticking his foot in the ground, getting his head on the, on the swivel and retracing his steps. Screenplays will be always be dead. I don't care what kind of screenplay it is. I feel like Clemson and, he's, and Clemson has used that as well, right? I mean, that's yes that from them and ETN. Yeah, they they they've tried to use it with ETN out of the backfield, but I'm pretty sure I already know the game plan for that. I can't expose it on here. <laughs> that's we can keep some secrets. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it off camera. There we go. But that's that other part. I mean, <clears throat> recognize and then go read and react. Go make a play. Even got 83, Cormonte Hamilton in there making a play. He wasn't even in your room for all of last year. That's crazy. We always knew he was going to be a D lineman. He's a little too chunky. <laughs> we told him all the time, you're going to put your hand in there or something. All right, 72 and 92. I mean, this I, – I don't know how you can do it any better. What's the secret here, baby? Well, this is simple. So, this right here is a simple – what we call a pin pool. Center's trying to – Pull around, guards trying to come down on Tommy. But Tommy does a good job of getting off of the ball and creating excellent penetration. Now, this messes up the running back's path. Now, he has to try to bounce it. He has to try to break down and find the gap. Then Haskell just does a good job of bullying the offensive lineman and just being ball savvy and getting there. But all of this started <clears throat> started with Tommy. It's hard to do a what we call a pin pull where you either have a center or a guard pulling when you have a D lineman, number one, that's either extra fast and quick off of the ball or strong. Well, Tommy has both. He has the quickness and the strength. So any guard is going to have an issue trying to block down on him heavy when you're pulling that center around. So he created enough penetration to where he messes up the running back and he messes up the pulling center, makes his path a little bit wider. He has the ball a little bit too much. You know, and you see this all the time, and, and people ask, Phoebe, you've been through this. Like, Haskell and Tommy are playing at such a high level. Like, why do they ever come off the field? Well, because other guys are playing well, and it keeps them fresh. I know that, that sometimes that can be frustrating to watch, but we've seen Teron Vincent making plays on these clips, Cremonte Hamilton showing up, Antoine Jackson sniffing out the screen. So it's not like they, the Buckeyes really have to just rely on only those two players. Yeah, they don't have to. You know what I mean? Coach Johnson's motto is always the next man up. And, you know, Coach Johnson has always been the type of coach that he loves to rotate. He'd rather play with four guys on the field that are fresh and will actually be efficient and make plays than play with just – no, six, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. Eight guys so he can rotate <laughs> rather than play with a solid four the whole game. And now your fourth quarter, your guys – Fourth quarter is when the game really starts when you're in a big game. You know what I mean? Like the game doesn't start first, second, and third at times. So the game starts in the fourth quarter. So if you're not a, if you can't play at a high level in the fourth, then you know, you won't you won't provide much value to the defense. So Coach Johnson has always been big on rotating and if he doesn't trust you enough to play, he won't put you in the game. And this is part of that freshness. I mean, this is a second half key play here and Tommy Togia looks like it might be the first play of the game for him. Oh, yeah, Tommy, this, this is how this is what it comes down to. Coach Johnson's motto is this. If you get a one-on-one, -on -one, you win your one-on-ones. From the look of it, Tommy has the fish for the one-on-one, -on -one, and he just barely misses it. But just him applying that amount of pressure and getting his hand on, on the quarterback's back to make him kind of pucker up a little bit, that's all you need sometimes. Because right there, he folded before, and Tommy didn't even take him to the ground. So – Tommy applying that pressure does a great job, and he's having to throw in the tight tunnel. You know what I mean? Like, the pocket, regardless, is still collapsing, 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 collapsing. So they do a good job up front, but it all starts with Tommy and the pressure. I think that's – and that's a picture that Coach Jay and 
Kerry Combs would frame right there, four silver bullets on the quarterback. That's big time. Not the first guy. It's as many guys as can get there as possible. Yep. All right, so this, you know, BB, when you looked at this, just how proud of you were you of this effort as it went on? Because this was a game where Ohio State's offense did not play to its potential. The silver bullets had to go out and get it done themselves. It's, I was, I'm always going to be proud of, it, of, the, of the defense. <clears throat> I'm going to be proud of the Buckeyes regardless whether they, you know, because they come out with a win. But as far as the defensive side goes, I was extremely proud of them just because, you know, with them having a lot of guys that have not played a lot of football at times, it's hard to, for a young guy to not play the blame game. You know what I mean? Well, they not doing this, so now we on the field more. And you could tell by the way the defense was playing, they wanted to keep getting on the field. You know what I mean? Like they were having fun out there playing, making plays, being productive. So um, I think the, the the biggest thing that I'm, I was proud of with this defense is that, you know, they buckled down and they played their game the way that they need to. Got a big win. It sets up the rematch in the Sugar Bowl for Ohio State against Clemson. Without question, those Rushmen are going to be key to that effort. Uh, against the Tigers if the Buckeyes can finally get over the hump and get into the national title game. I know Robert Landers will be breaking it down for us and watching uh, eagerly on New Year's Day, and he'll be right back, I'm sure, uh, with a Buckeye Q to give us his insight afterwards. BB, thanks, man. Appreciate you, brother. All right, for BB, I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time at Letterman Row for Buckeye Q.